everyone. Welcome to the talk. Um, this one's going to be by Jeff Elmore. The title of the talk is Parsing Sentence, uh, Sentences with the Other Natural Language Toolkit, Link Grammar. Uh, Jeff Elmore has been a Python developer for eight years, a uh, Django developer for three years. He's currently working at Metametrics Incorporated on natural language processing projects. Take it away. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be talking about parsing sentences with uh, link grammar in Python. Oh, let me click on my thing. There we go. Okay, who am I? Uh, you know my name. Uh, I work for Metametrics in uh, Durham, North Carolina. And uh, we do research and development on uh, reading comprehension and text complexity. Uh, so as a result of that, uh, I spend some of my time analyzing text for my job. Before I go further, I should be upfront. Uh, I'm not a linguist. I did not create link grammar. I actually didn't even create the uh, Python bindings for link grammar. I just sort of improved them, made them a lot easier to use. So, you know, I'm an amateur, but I think you'll see that you really don't have to be an expert to, to use systems like this. Okay, what should you get out of this? A uh, basic idea of what a link grammar is, how it works, what it means, some specifics about this implementation uh, that I'll be talking about, and of course, how to use the, the Python bindings. All right, so what about NLTK? Uh, NLTK is a fantastic library. I love it. I use it all the time. Uh, it's really great. I'm not, I'm not here to talk bad about it. But uh, sometimes when I use it, I get the sense that there's sort of some assembly required. Uh, and one of these cases is um, parsing sentences. You know, if you do a Google search on parsing sentences with NLTK, you get some very helpful Stack Overflow posts about defining your grammar and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't have time to define my whole grammar for the English language, you know? Like, I just want to parse some sentences. Uh, so I think link grammar is another tool that, you know, has less familiarity in the Python community. Uh, it's very powerful has a comprehensive dictionary sort of built into it, works out of the box in a way kind of that NLTK doesn't. I'd love to see them, uh, you know, you can use them together. I'd love to see actually link grammar get incorporated into, um, into NLTK. Okay, so what is link grammar? Uh, and it's sort of two things, you know, but the, the names are conflated. So it is a theory for parsing sentences and also a specific implementation of this theory with a comprehensive dictionary. Uh, it's implemented in C. And it was created by these guys at uh, Carnegie Mellon, both of, the, both of the things, the theory and the implementation. First paper in 91 and um, latest release in 2004. And I'll kind of bounce back and forth between the theory and the application in the talk, so hopefully you get a little, a, a sense of both. Uh, <clears throat> so again, not an expert at parsing systems, but I do want to just mention you know, in looking at several dependency grammars and, and other things, uh, you know, how is link grammar different from these other parsing systems? And two things kind of have jumped out at me. The first is that there is no explicit notion of constituent phrases in the link grammar, so like noun phrases, verb phrases, etc. Those can be recovered after you do the sort of link grammar thing, and we'll see how that works, but it's not built into the theory. Uh, the other big difference is um, an emphasis on lexicality, and you know what does that mean? What does that mean? So lexicality meaning like specific words. So you know, there's a lot that you can do in parsing when you're talking about you know all nouns. You know, here's how nouns can work. Here's how verbs can work. Here's how huge classes of words can work. But in, in processing natural language, you know, often specific words or small classes of words have really specific idiomatic functions. So, you know, having that, having the ability to say this specific word can have these relationships out to others, or this small set of words can have relationships out to others is a, is a powerful notion. So uh, let's just jump right in. You know, I mean, if you get one thing out of this talk, uh, it should be, how can, I, how can I get this working in Python? Uh, so you install some dependencies, uh, some of which you will already have. This is Ubuntu. Uh, but um, some of my colleagues are working on making system packages for Debian as, and perhaps other distributions as well. So get it installed, uh, you instantiate a parser, and you pass a sentence to it. In this case, the big dog chased a cat. 
Uh, and then you get back a list of these linkage objects. And the reason that it returns a list is because there will often be multiple valid parses or multiple valid linkages for any one sentence. In this case, it's a simple enough sentence, and there's actually only one interpretation that, that Link Grammar returns. All right, so you know, what can we do with this, with this linkage object? I mean, this is the main thing that you'll be operating with if you're using Link Grammar. One of the simplest things that you can do is just display it uh, and look at it. Uh, so there's a couple ways to do that. Built in is this little ASCII diagram, it's just a property on the linkage object. You print it out and you can see these little lines between the words and a description of their relationships. Also, uh, it has a little postscript property, which is just a string that's a postscript document. If you save it out to a file, convert it into an image, it, it looks like that. So just same thing, different representation. Some other things you can do, and one of the things I've tried to do in um, working on the Python bindings, just make them a little more object-oriented, a little friendlier. Uh, so you know, all the kinds of properties that you might want to access on a linkage are now just exposed as properties. So you can get all the words, and you'll see they're annotated with part of speech, sort of you know, big dot a, meaning it's an adjective. You can also access all of the links. And a link is like left word, left link, right link, right word. So I'm just iterating through those and printing them out. So you can see there, like, dog has a subject singular relationship with chaste. Uh, so that's kind of, we'll, we'll get into that more. Uh, you can also access, as I mentioned, the constituents, although it's not a, you know, integral to the theory. It's nice to be able to talk about noun phrases and verb phrases and that sort of thing. So you can get these out actually in uh, flat form and nested form. Here's the flat form. So, you know, there's one clause, which is that S uh, element, and then there's two noun phrases and a verb phrase uh, in this sentence. All right, what does any of that mean, though? <laughs> like, there's these links and the words. I mean, what is happening? So I think, you know, let's, let's dive into theory land and, and understand a little bit about what, what that diagram meant. So what is a link grammar? Uh, if you had to have you know, one sentence description, it would be this top one, a set of rules defining how words can be linked together to form sentences, but that's pretty generic. So more specifically, it's kind of, there's big, three big elements, basically, and the first is a dictionary that defines for each word or class of words, you know, what are the sets of left and right links that can go together? And these uh, combinations of left and right links are called disjuncts. I don't know what, where that word comes from, but they're called disjuncts. Uh, the next thing is some general rules describing which combinations of links uh, result in a valid sentence. And finally, uh, there's certain linguistic phenomena that just cannot actually be fully explained by just the links between the words. Uh, so there's this um, post-processing step after you've, you've got your set of links and uh, it accounts for certain linguistic phenomena, and also you create the constituent phrases in that, in that step, and we'll talk, uh, we'll talk some more about that. Okay, so let's, let's dive in and understand more about what this means. So how, how can words be linked together? Uh, and basically the idea is words, you know, you define in this dictionary, words are defining as saying, I have like a connector to the right and a connector to the left, and these connectors define a relationship like subject, object, adjective, uh, you know, et cetera. And a left subject connector connects to a right, on one word, connects to a right subject connector on another word. And these are denoted by uh, plus and minus. So let's look at, we're gonna, we're gonna go through sort of a toy, a toy grammar to, to kind of get you a sense of how, how you would define these, how this, how this stuff works. So in this case, uh, the determiners and the adjectives have very simple relationships. They just need a determiner relationship to, with a word to their right. Uh, chaste is a little bit more complex in that he needs a subject to his left and an object to his right. And then the nouns in this grammar are a bit more complex because they can be used in multiple ways. And uh, that little string that you see, you know, A and D or D, that is not the disjunct. That is a description of possible, com, you know, possible disjuncts. So, you know, they can, dog and cat can be preceded by an adjective and determiner, and then be a subject or an object, 
or just be preceded by a determiner and be a subject or an object. So for this sentence here, the dog chased, or big dog chased the cat, the uh, disjunct for dog is, you know, adjective to the left, determiner to the left, subject to the right. And cat, similarly, determiner to the left, object to the left. Okay, what are the general rules? There are four of them. They are connectivity, exclusion, planarity, and ordering. Let's talk about each of them. Connectivity, simple enough. In order for a sentence to be, uh, a parse to be valid, all of the words have to be connected. There are some exceptions that we'll talk about later. But so, you know, the big cat is fine. Even though it's a sentence fragment, it's well defined under this toy grammar because all the words are connected to each other. But the dog chased a cat big does not work because big needs to connect to a word to its right with an adjective relationship, but there is no word for him to connect to. So that sentence, the second sentence, is not, is not valid. <clears throat> Uh, exclusion, I'm sorry I don't have an example for this one. I, try. I was trying to put one together and it, it just ended up being so convoluted. It didn't, seem, it didn't seem worth it. And this is a really simple idea to understand. So basically, words can have different relationships maybe that would be affected by the context around them. And you just can't use more than one of those relationships at a time. So, you know, you can't have more than one link connecting two words in, in a given linkage. All right. Planarity. So the idea here is if you draw these arcs above the words as I'm doing, uh, the arcs cannot cross each other. Uh, and so you see this, you know, the dog chased the cat is fine. None of the links cross each other. But the dog the chased cat does not work. Even though it's the same words and the same links between the same words, it doesn't work because uh, the connection between dog and chased crosses the connection between the and cat. And this rule actually gets you some really nice properties. It imposes a bit of structure on the language. You know, so you'll have kind of a group of words that are all kind of linked up to the left and then one link coming over way from the right to the end word. But it can't just be connecting to any word in there. So you kind of, you end up getting, a, you impose a bit of a tree structure uh, by having this rule. And it way reduces the sort of search space of uh, you know, which, which linkages do I need to consider? Finally, this one is kind of hard to explain in words, but it's completely easy to understand. Basically, when you're satisfying multiple connectors on one side of a disjunct, the ordering of the words and the connectors must match. It's a little weird. The matching goes in reverse. The connectors proceeding from the left, left to right match words from right to left. But an example, I think, totally clears this up, you know. Big, the dog chased the cat does not work because that disjunct went, you know, A, D, not D, A. So this is, just describes the order in which uh, uh, connectors must be satisfied. So let's talk about, let's talk about the, the third component, this post-processing step. So, and I'm not going to dive real deeply into this. I really would encourage you guys to read the papers that these guys have written. Very accessible. They have a nice kind of short one, it's not very long, easy to understand, and they go into way more detail about uh, the exact what's happening in the post-processing. But I do want to give you a sense of it. So um, the basic idea is that after you know, you've, you've described what the, what the links are, groups of words are sort of separated off into domains, and you can think of domain as, as like kind of like a constituent, sort of a, a, a group of words that are related to each other. And then you can apply some rules to these domains. So examples of these rules would be like, if this link type is in this domain, this other link type must be in it. Or if this link type is in this domain, this link type cannot be in it. Uh, and there, and there, are, there are some others. Two other things uh, happen in post-processing. Um, the constituent structure is, uh, is created. And that is, there's kind of a mapping onto the domains uh, to the constituents. And then there's some special handling for uh, coordinating conjunctions, which is kind of interesting enough that I'd like to talk about it separately. So let's say we had a sentence like this, you know, the dog chased the cat and the rat and a wily wombat. Uh, the problem with this is that it will break planarity because chased needs to be connected to rat and cat and wombat, 
but that's going to end up crossing some of the other linkages between these words. And the way that uh, the link grammar guys address this was by creating sublinkages, which I've exposed in a, in a kind of simple way through the Python interface. You can iterate through all the sublinkages in a linkage object and print their diagram. And each sublinkage is kind of one section of your list separated by these coordinating conjunctions. So you can see how that goes. First one's cat, then rat, then wombat. Uh, you can also access a uh, union property, which will combine all of these sublinkages into one linkage that actually will break planarity. But you know, depending on your application, you might not be troubled by that. OK, we've talked some about some theory. Let's move over into what uh, you know, real implementation looks like. And this is really the power of link grammar. You know, I was, say, I was saying about NLTK, the thing that's, that's frustrating with it is, you know, if you're not a linguist and you just want to parse some sentences for some application, uh, you, know, you can't just do that in a, in a meaningful way on real text. And the work that, uh, you know, it's not just those three guys, I'm sure many, many people worked on this, but they created a really comprehensive uh, system that does a good job at processing sentences you'll find in the real world. So let's talk some about, about this implementation. Okay, obviously the big difference is it's got a much larger dictionary, you know. Uh, instead of the like four link types that we had, there's 117 link types and 60,000 words. Many of these words are, you know, compressed into big categories for convenience, you know. Hey, all all of, cer uh, you know, all of certain singular nouns are, are, can operate the same way. So it's not like each word is uniquely, all of its re relationships are unique. So let's talk more about these link types, these 117 link types. Some of them are the same sorts of things that we saw in the toy grammar, you know, subject, object, determiner, etc. cetera. Uh, but some of them are much more specific. So I've picked out a couple here that I think kind of show the range of specificity, and this gets a little bit at what I was talking about with the emphasis on lexicality. So like AZ, this connector is all about just the word as being used in this specific way. You know, he viewed him as stupid. That is a particular usage of as that we want to treat separately from other uses of, of as. Similarly, uh, you know, for long, uh, I didn't wait for long, you know, this is like for and long go together in this, you know, sort of idiomatic way in a, word, in a way that other words can't. It's not like you can be like, oh, I didn't wait by long. I mean, that just doesn't work, doesn't mean the same thing. Um, also, I pulled out a few, there's a bunch that are, deal with like time expressions. There's all kinds of ways that time is talked about sort of in an idiomatic way. So like on Tuesday, you know, so uh, on can connect to, you know, certain uh, time expression words. Similarly, you know, certain verbs are picked out that have to do with time expressions. So last, you know, it lasted five hours. Uh, so this is just a sampling of um, some of the 117 link types. They have a nice page that's just like a couple sentence summary of each of them. You can, you can scroll through that and get a sense of uh, all the phenomena that are captured. I want to talk a little bit about what this sort of gets you, what this idea of really richly describing what kinds of words can have what kinds of relationships with other kinds of words. So I've got some pairs here of valid and invalid sentences that kind of demonstrate these capabilities. So, you know, the fact that that is a construction that works, but the event that it doesn't, it doesn't work. That is not, you can't, that sentence doesn't make sense. Uh, so similarly, you know, going to a movie this evening, that's fine. This theater, theater can't fit in that sentence. Um, this last one I like, you know, I hope that he comes to the party tomorrow. Versus like, I hope him to come to the party. You know, that doesn't sound right. Uh, and it is, uh, you, you know, that's indicated by this. So, so this, is, this is kind of a, and they actually have another page with huge, uh, huge number of examples of these showing, you know, hey, what, what things can we detect as valid or invalid sentences? Uh, something else that happens in the real world is that there are ambiguous sentences. Uh, you know, once you, our, our simple one returned only one linkage, but once you start getting uh, longer sentences, 
they pretty much always return multiple linkages, some, you know, or linkages sometimes like 100. Uh, so there's some rules to kind of prioritize these linkages in terms of validity. And there's some simple ones, you know, num of unused words, number of links, et cetera. But uh, an interesting one, I think, is that the disjuncts actually have a defined cost uh, from zero to three. And this is sort of a notion of plausibility. So a high cost disjunct is like, well, you can connect these words in, these way, in this way, but it's a bit strange. And if you can find a linkage that doesn't involve you connecting those words in that way, you should probably use that one instead. All right, uh, that's kind of the basic stuff, but I want to talk about some of the other nice things that Link Grammar does for you. Uh, one of the things is it will guess about the purpose of words that it doesn't know. So we have this, I am hunting wumpuses. It doesn't know what wumpuses are, but it guesses. It says, oh, I think that's probably a noun, and I think it probably has an object plural relationship with hunting, which I would say is correct in this case. And it, in, and it indicates with that little uh, the exclamation mark that it, doesn't, that it doesn't know the word. Similarly, there is kind of this notion of robustness. Uh, you know, when you're parsing sentences in the real world, there's just cruft and people do weird things and ah, you know, you don't want it to just bail if it sees something strange. So this is, I mentioned there's, uh, you know, there are some exceptions to that uh, connectivity rule. You can explicitly say, I'm, I'm creating a parser here and saying, okay, max null count equals 10. I will allow you to have up to 10 words in this sentence that are not connected to anything and still go for it. Uh, and so you can see, you know, there's this garbage in the middle that has, doesn't connect to anything, but it will, you know, parse around that and give you some sense like, well, here's what I was able to recover about the structure of this sentence despite this garbage in it. Uh, which this is, a, I think, a really fantastic, uh, fantastic feature. I want to talk a little bit about um, some applications uh, where this is being used. Right now it's used as the grammar checker in Abbey Word, which is an open source word processing system that I, I've never used it, but, and actually they maintain currently the uh, C implementation of Link Grammar. Uh, it's also used by the Relex project, which is not a project that I know a lot about, but I understand it's sort of a um, information extraction, semantic tagging kind of system, and they use Link Grammar as a first pass to uh, describe the syntactic structure of, of text coming in. Some applications that we're considering using in our business, we spend uh, a fair amount of our time thinking about how we can quantify the complexity of text. And one of the simplest ways that goes back many years is looking at sentence length. Uh, which works out very well, uh, except some cases. You know, you have long sentences that maybe are not that complex. So we think that there's some opportunity to use link grammar to uh, describe a little bit more so in a sophisticated way, a little more subtle way, the, the complexity of a sentence. Another interesting application we're considering is um, filtering sort of raw, ugly text, like web pages, and OCR scans trying to recover just the sort of grammatical prose contained in there. Uh, so, you know, you, you can imagine breaking these texts up into sentences, trying to parse them all, and, you know, throw out the ones that don't parse. I don't know if this will work. We're, we're investigating this now, and, and uh, we'll see if it works. Another interesting one, I think, is uh, evaluating student writing. Uh, you know, obviously, you can point out specific grammatical errors, but I think there's some interesting ways we might be able to describe what kinds of syntactic structures are used as writers develop in, uh, in ability. So that's another thing that, that we're considering with this system. Something else, I was talking to someone in the expo hall yesterday, and he was talking about like a natural language sort of querying system. He had an interest in allowing someone to say, oh, I'm curious about the number of events that have occurred between this time and this time. And, and I think this is a system that, uh, that could be used to facilitate that. You can imagine you know, creating your own dictionary with specific link types for your specific domain, and you know, getting at the notion of the same kind of question can be asked in multiple ways. And you get all of those, you find the link types, and then you find, like, here are, here's the verb you know, that I'm interested in, here's the noun that I'm interested in. Uh, so I, I think that's kind of, a, kind of an interesting application. Uh, okay. What needs to be done? I have not really spent a bunch of time on this. 
Uh, I was using the system and it was really inconvenient, so I was just trying to make it easier for, for me to use, but there's a lot that, uh, that I think can be done. And this is all open source, so you know, I, I encourage you guys to, to contribute. One thing is better packaging. You, know, it didn't, you couldn't just set up pi install, you had to do various things. So I have done the minimal amount required to make it so you can type Python set up pi install and it works. But I'm not a packaging guy, I'm sure I did it probably wrong. Uh, you know, I'd love for someone else to, to take a look at that and make it better. Uh, another thing that I, is troubling to me that uh, it lacks is the ability to access and manipulate the dictionary through Python. Uh, the dictionary is just stored in a flat file format, and you can't, you can't get at it. Uh, you know, so I, mean, I would like to be able to say, like, how, what disjuncts uh, you know, are connected with this word? Uh, can these two words be connected and how? Uh, and I'd like to be able to do that through Python. I don't think that's a, a huge amount of work to just process that flat file. Along those same lines, um, allowing easier extension of the dictionary, you know, of course, uh, if you have a specific domain where you may uh, want to be doing, some, you know, parsing sentences in, in a different sort of way, you can define your own dictionary with your own link types and such. But I think it'd be nicer if you could sort of do that programmatically through code. You know, you could say, like, well, I want to use this base dictionary, but I want to add on uh, one, exactly. I need to include wumpuses. This is key for my users. So it'd be nice to have that in a kind of programmatic way. You could even have for, oh, in this use case, we want to we wanna allow, we want to extend the dictionary in this way. Uh, so I think that'd be a nice thing to do, and I, I don't think it would be terribly difficult. Something else that, this, and this is probably something that we will do, uh, you know, I mean, it operates comfortably fast, I think is the phrase that they use. But, you know, if you're splitting up a large text and you want to parse all of the sentences, if you're doing it serially, it takes an uncomfortably long time. So uh, something that, that we're looking at doing is exposing it via web service with parallel execution. You send a text in, it'll split it all into sentences, and then parse those in parallel and return the results. Because, of course, there's no relationship between the sentences for the parsing, so there's no reason that that, that, that work can't be done in parallel. So, um, summing up, link grammar is a powerful theory for parsing sentences. There is a well-developed comprehensive implementation of this theory, and uh, it is now easy to use with Python. I actually have, I think, a little bit more time uh, than I thought I was going to have. So I do want to show you uh, one quick thing that's kind of fun. Uh, let's, let's maybe make this a little smaller. So this I just think is cool. Uh, one of my coworkers created this. You can... Yeah, yeah. Actually, I do think, you know, there's no reason, my, my, and you know, I, I'd like to acknowledge that, uh, you know, this is work that I did for my company, and they have allowed me to uh, release the work that I've done uh, open source uh, to the community, which I think is fantastic. This, uh, I see no reason that uh, this couldn't be released as well um, and, ma and made available. I think it's a great learning tool, you know, you can, Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So actually, I hadn't really thought of that uh, until this morning. I was like, oh man, I got 45 minutes. I thought I only had 30. Maybe I'll show the, uh, the Ajax thing. That's, a, that's pretty fun. Uh, so that's that. I don't know if we really want to, I don't know how much, how much can we show? You know. uh, there, oh, oh, here, this is kind of interesting. There are some different options that you can specify. Most of these really don't matter all that much. You can change um, how much, you know, the, the maximum null count that are allowed, uh, the sort of, if you want to display these walls. You know, this is, since we have some time, I'll, I'll explain the walls, because uh, some of you may have noticed those and wondered, like, what is left wall? What is right wall? This is kind of an interesting idea. They found that it was valuable to have 
the notion of the left and right ends of the sentence denoted by a specific token that could have relationships in. Uh, so like, here's, here's kind of why this works. Uh, let's say like, I think it'll even work for that, the big dog chased the cat. Yeah, so like you'll note that left wall has this WD uh, connection with dog. And what it is saying is like, dog really is the thing that is beginning this sentence. That is the first word that is doing something. And that word is modified by this adjective and this determiner, singular, etc. cetera. But uh, dog is really the key player. Right wall seems less significant. I, I, am, I do not deeply understand uh, the nature of the right wall. Uh, so anyway, I think that's about that. Let's check that out. Well, it doesn't seem to like that one. Let's actually do, this is, a, this is kind of an interesting thing. Sometimes if you, you can, this linkage limit, you can tell it like, oh, only look through 10, only look through 20 or something. But if you have the null count high, uh, if you do that linkage limit, sometimes it'll stop early and it'll be like, oh, well, I found one. Uh, yeah, all the words are null, so that's fine. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look. That's nice. Your example is great. Chased, in this case, has an adjective relationship with cat. So that's fantastic. So it could not also have, then, the, the object relationship. That's fantastic. All right. What was it? Chase the cat toy. Chase the cat toy? No, I mean the, the big dog chased the cat toy. The big dog chased the cat toy. Yeah, this is a great one. AN, actually, no, I do not know all of these 117 link types, but I know some of them. AN is when a noun is used as an adjective. So cat is a noun, but in this case, it's used as an adjective to describe toy. Oh, the big. There we go. That didn't change the other thing. I don't know what I was thinking there. Uh, so um, I will try. You, there is, if you go to the link grammar page, you actually can parse sentences and see this picture. It's way less fancy. It's not color. It's not syntax highlighted. There isn't, we got little mouse overs here on the link types. It also breaks at like an 80 character, so if you have a long sentence, it's impossible to understand what it means. But, uh, but you can get some sense of this by going to the link grammar page. I will, uh, this, I see no reason we can't put this up on, uh, on like a free host and, and uh, you know, make it available, link it out from the, from the development page. So let's, let's go back and uh, here's some further reading. Uh, my blog and Twitter and such. Uh, actually, that this presentation link has not worked yet. I'll, I haven't put that up, but I will. Uh, and then just some other stuff, the link grammar homepage, uh, the package on PyPI, and the Bitbucket repo. I should mention one other thing. This, the original Python uh, bindings were hosted on Launchpad, and they seem to not be being maintained. There, there were several kind of pull requests, or whatever they call them on Launchpad, to, to do some of the same things I had done, and they were from like two years ago, never responded to. So I do want to contact those guys and say like, hey, you know, I'm happy to, happy to contribute my work back. But if you search for PyLink Grammar, you'll probably find that Launchpad, Launchpad page. And that's the, that's the kind of older version that is uh, a lot less work has gone into it. But uh, the one we've done is on Bitbucket, and it's available on PyPI. So uh, oh, also, uh, Metametrics is hiring. Uh, if these topics are of interest to you, uh, you can contact me at uh, jailmore at lexile.com or uh, certainly talk to me after the talk. So I think we can take some questions now. Um, one of the things I'm a little curious about, in fact, is the statement here that this is syntax, because if you have 140 links, 
And if you parse out as explicitly as opposed to being something like a preposition, it looks like in essence what they're trying to do is come up with in essence a simplified semantic framework for English as well that mounts on top of a sentence structure. Sure, sure, sure. So the, the, the question or comment was, you know, is this, is this syntax or is this actually getting towards semantics? And uh, again, uh, you know, I am a, a dog in a lab coat. I do not know, uh, but I guess, I guess what I would say is, you know, I think that uh, there's this distinction between syntax and semantics is pretty blurry, uh, you know. So certain, only certain words can be used in certain ways, and you know, these relationships are, uh, are not so well defined. I will say, you can create ridiculous nonsensical sentences that will be parsed uh, appropriately by, by link grammar. One other, uh, just quick comment, there are some other projects that are really interesting using link grammars. One that you might look up is the um, Common Coverage Link Grammar, and it's a project actually to, in, instead of hand crafting this dictionary, it's uh, to induce a link grammar from a large collection of unannotated text. And that would definitely have more uh, on the semantic side, meaning like, I have never seen these goofy constructions, so you know they they won't they wouldn't work. So can it handle uh, obscure sentences like garden path sentences? Like, like what was the last thing you said? Like garden path sentences, like the horse chased past the barn fell. Um, I don't I don't really know. I guess you could bring it up. And try. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we can try that. Let's try it. We got time. They do say that most of their work, what was the sentence again? The horse ran past the barn, fell. The horse raced past raced, the, raced, the barn. Raced, 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 raced past the, the barn, barn, fell. So, so the idea is that it, it seems like it's a verb, but it's actually not. The, the horse raced, the, raced past the barn is a descriptive the, phrase. Yeah, there, there are two kinds of horses. One horse raced past the barn, the one that was raced past the barn fell. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I wish I were smart enough to look at that and tell you, like, yeah, it got that, no problem. Uh, I don't know. I can, I can tell you, it doesn't always get it right. Like, I, you know, I've been trying to push the limits, and I'll put sort of silly sentences in there, and it'll describe them, and I'm like, no, that was not it. I think, actually, the first one is correct, I think. The first one's correct? Yeah. Excellent. A float effortlessly, isn't it? Yeah. Colorless green. Yeah. Sleep furiously. Sleep furiously. Yeah, the other one that's, is time Fury. flies like an arrow and fruit flies like bananas. <laughs> I, that seems that seems reasonably good. I don't know. It seemed to do all right. In your experience, can this be used to parse multiple sentences that pair together, so, or, or even uh, run-ons that should be two sentences or something like that? Uh, so the question is, uh, you know, can you parse multiple sentences that go together or run-ons? Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. The intention is to do a single sentence at a time. Um, and actually, that's something, you know, Using this in conjunction with NLTK, use NLTK to segment your sentences and then pass all the individual sentences. So you can give it multiple sentences, but I, if it works, it probably worked wrong in those cases. Well, you, in fact, the example I gave you with the and, if you use an and conjunction, in fact, to string the sentences together, the dog, big dog chased the cat and the cat died, those could have been two separate sentences, sure. but the and, you replace the period with the and. Sure. And then you see, in fact, that the reference is done correctly. Sure, sure. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the uh, case when the word isn't in the dictionary. Do you mm -hmm. have access to the underlying probabilities? Do, do you have any idea of like the confidence it's saying this is a noun? Uh, I have literally no idea. I do not know at all about that. I'm, I'm sorry. When you get back multiple linkages like this, do you have a heuristic for figuring out which one is that like, I, like when we look at it, we're like, yeah, we know which one of these makes sense. But like from code, do you have any idea which one is the better linkage or? Sure, sure, sure. So uh, the question was, you know, when you get multiples, how do you know which one is the best? 
Uh, my understanding is that the first one that it returns is the one that got the highest score. Okay. So it has some very rudimentary uh, methods to score uh, the sentences and returns them back in order of uh, the scoring. Thank you. I was wondering how this, um, how this interacts with WH questions. So something like, what did you find yesterday? Let's, let's try it. What did you? Oh, look, WQ, that probably means some what, who question. And what about if you give it, what did you find it yesterday, which is not good. What did you find it yesterday? Yeah, which shouldn't be allowed. <coughs> mm. Yeah, you know. So, <laughs> it tries its best. Uh, yeah, and I really am intrigued by, I have not looked into that common coverage one. Uh, I think that that might be a little bit more distinguishing in terms of uh, describing what sorts of things are seen in a large corpus. So it's, that's an interesting area to look into. You'd mentioned that um, working with dictionaries, you have to do that in C code. That's, that's correct, adding new entries to the dictionary? Oh, no, it's just a flat file. It oh, is okay. a, uh, it's an ASCII flat file, very simple format. OK, so then what about creating new links? Um, Okay. Um, is that done through Python? Can no, no, no. It's okay. uh, the the dictionary sort of is the links. You I the see. dictionary defines the link types and how they can be used across across words. Okay. So you can go in and manipulate that flat file and do your own links and do everything like that. But you know, I'm a Python guy. I'm like, ah, I want to be able to do this with Python. I don't want to have to look at this flat file. I have a second question or, or comment, really, offer. Um, I work at DreamHost. I have a free hosting account, and I can put up that Ajax stuff and have it you know, freely accessible. So if you can get clearance, we can have a place to put it right away. OK, yeah, that's great. Yeah, right. um, talk to me after. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can you use this to kind of do the inverse? So like the idea of being that everybody seems to like Markov chains a lot. So you could use something like this to generate a more sensible output of a Markov chain, you know, do you get where I'm going with that? With having these rules, you could make out, generate output that seems more sensible than kind of random stuff. Yeah, sure. I uh, actually never thought about that, but that sounds like a really fantastic idea. Uh, you know, you can, you can imagine this in the same sense of that uh, natural language um, question asking system, you can imagine as a sort of response system, you know, used use for language generation. Oh, here's the concept that I want to communicate. Uh, you know, I know the syntactic structure that, uh, that are legitimate. I'm going to put my nouns in where they should be. I'm going to put my verbs in where they should be. So I, I think there's a lot of opportunity for using it in that way. Maybe more conceptually than uh, specifically this, this code. But. Hi, uh, thanks a lot for the talk. I thought it was great. Um, do you have a sense of, like using it as a grammar checker, do you have a sense of how many sort of false positives and false negatives it has? Uh, I, I do not have specific numbers on that. Uh, I do know, as I said, it's being used in a grammar checker in Abbey Word. Uh, I do, we are doing some experiments right now at, uh, to look at this parsing, uh, you know, filtering out non-prose text. So we're gonna be um, showing like, I don't know, several thousand sentences to people and having them rank them as like, oh, I think this is grammatically correct, I think it's not grammatically correct. So hopefully we would recover some, uh, some some notion of that. It's, it's tough because that will give us only a gross sense, perhaps, uh, you know, because like, oh, this produced a linkage. I mean, you have to be pretty sophisticated and know all of those link types to really say, like, did it get this exactly right? right. Uh, so I think that's a, that's a large undertaking. Maybe the Abbey, Abbey Word guys have uh, done something like that, but uh, I'm not aware of it. Thanks. All right. No more questions? Thanks for the talk. And uh, there's a robot raffle going on right now, so we don't want to miss that. So. Uh.